Hello, David Zaritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. I am rejoined by a good friend of the channel, Simon Watterson. Simon, welcome back. Hey, how are you? I, I'm doing great. You have been unbelievably busy, haven't you? Um, yeah, it's been a, the last three or four months pretty busy with all the kind of like with all the, the Bond stuff shenanigans and you know, like you know, I know you've been busy as well, sir. But it's been it's been it's been fun though. And then it was nice to have a nice holiday Christmas period and then um, into the new year feeling a bit more refreshed. Yeah, and uh, speaking of refreshed, today I'm actually very excited because today, as we're recording this, you've got a little something going on. I don't know what, a, a book launch? Yeah, I think so. Uh, uh, yeah, a, li a little bit, a little bit of a book launch. So it's, um, yeah, it's new, new book and kind of um, reflective of, well, a lot of movies, but then the, the, the 16 years that I've done with Daniel on Bond, and then a couple of years prior to that with Pierce on Bond. So yeah, just it goes back, it spans back quite a quite a long way. And um, it's nice to reflect on that and then put it down in a book and, you know, give some give some good tips and advice and, you know, what what we've been through and, and you know, how we can help others. I think that's a, that's a nice message. Yeah, and it's nice to be able to nice to be able to kind of like document it and go, hey, you know what, give it a go or, you know, take what you want from it. Be inspired, be motivated. Well, speaking of motivated, I, so I've got to start off. And for those uh, uninitiated, we're talking about intelligent fitness, the smart way to reboot your body and get in shape. And obviously, it's it's by Simon. I'm going to I'm going to confess something because I, I said to Simon, I love giving my audience behind the scenes. Um, we've been talking for years. You've been interviewed by this channel several times. Um, but when I received the version of this book that I was to read, I said, you know what, Simon, I need about a week, maybe even the weekend just to go through it. And less than 12 hours later, I messaged him and I said, dude, I couldn't put it down. And that's because it's not the typical book of this kind. I thought it was going to be, you know, step one, step two. This is a story. You wrote this like a storyteller that shares all these incredible journeys. Did you do that on purpose? Yeah, well, the, the easy thing about it is that, that the nice thing is that it's, it's, it's just reflective. So I'm only drawing on experience. I'm not trying to kind of like tell people like what to do and this is what you should do. This is what I did. Please draw some inspiration from it. And this is what I did for particular scenes or for um, particular, whether that be aesthetic or athletic. And I put all the programs down and all the nutrition's down and told a few little stories of, you know, the, the setbacks that, that, um, that we have, like everybody has, and how you, you know, you, you don't need to be, you know, you don't need to get down about your setbacks. It's just about resetting and kind of like um, and making things more sustainable. And also as well, you know, just it's nice to be inspired. It, they're, they're, it's inspiring. And that, I think that's the main thing that I like to kind of like make people feel is inspired and not so much. Don't try and emulate. Don't try and be that person. Just be inspired by that person. And then, you know, you can be, you know, for, I know it's a bit of a cliche, but being the best version of yourself or being on your own journey. And, um, and, and, it's, and, it, and it's there as a toolbox. You know, you can pick and choose whatever, whatever programs you want. And like you, like, you know, you know, it's very, you know, there's a lot of bond stuff there cause that's been very prevalent through my career, but there's other, there's other bits in there as well from star Wars is and, and Marvel movies and, you know, di different inspirational stories where people struggle with their, you know, with their fitness and their health and their well being. like all of us, you know, whether you're an actor or just, you know, or an accountant, we're all, we're all kind of like, we're all under the same kind of like pressures. Yeah, it's a great point, too, because I think what made me so motivated to read the whole thing through and not put it down, I stayed to the wee hours of the morning on it, is because you bookended, excuse the pun, the whole idea that this is motivational, that you could read this in many different ways. You could read it as a bit of an instruction manual. You could use this as a reboot. You could read it as just a very interesting story behind the scenes of yeah. quite frankly, the film industry, because nobody nobody has ever delivered a book like this where you understand 
actors need to preheat themselves a year or sometimes more in advance to do the job that they do. It's not the aesthetics around it. That's one aspect. It's to do the job they were hired to do. Yeah, and that's and that's I think the the main the main thing is that you know it, um, just because a, a, an actor you know they're given things to be able to fill, facilitate what what they need to do and it, it kind of like it used to be um, perceived as more of a luxury but now it's a complete necessity. So to portray that a particular character like. Bond or, or any, any, any of the other kind of like um, comic book heroes or, or any of the Star Wars, they, they really are, you know, in, you know, they're in the trenches. They're having to do like their own kind of like stunt work. They're having to look and perform a particular way. And that, you know, you can't, you can't do that in a few weeks. That takes a few months or even, you know, like the last one with No Time to Die, you know, um, myself and um, Daniel, we spent about a year probably getting ready, ready for that. And, and, but it, you can see it though. You can see that that year is in that movie. You know, you can see that the the, the fitness and the movement and how how kind of like you know I try and match the um, I try and match the physicality to the to the mentality as well. And and I think like you know when you watch a movie that the person has to you know, he has to look capable. You got to be look. You got to look capable of doing what you're you know you're asking the audience to kind of like observe because otherwise you know we don't buy into it and it just makes the whole cinema experience like much more you know much more enjoyable more believable and um yeah it's faster it's quicker it's more efficient and and, it, and it's great so fitness now and that whole athletic side of things is becoming more and more and more prevalent than um, than ever before yeah there was even some great parts to, that speak to that where you were um and you have to read the book to know who i'm talking about i'm not going to spoil it uh, but you were talking about a particular actor that came to you that thought, all right, I've done this before. There are some old ways that I've done it. And I'm just going to go crazy and just, you know, you know, and I'm going to be a slog at the end of it. And you were like, no, mate, you know, this could be thrilling if you let it be. Uh, so I love those little peppered in stories of that. Yeah. And everyone comes with their own. Everyone comes with their own theory. And and I'm very much, you know, I, I, I embrace, you know, other people's theories and, and philosophies like all the time. And then I just like, um, and then I, um, I added like a little bit of mine and just try and make it more, um, I think, efficient. I think kind of like workouts mm. now, they have to be, you know, we're all under such time constraints and, you know, we're, 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 we're time poor and, um, and we, we need um, efficiency and um, we, we need our workouts to, to, you know, to get a lot, a lot more bang for a lot more bang for your for your buck, as you would say, mm. um, <laughs> not as I would say, yeah. Um, yeah. So so yeah, you, you need to get a lot out. You need to get a lot out of your um, a lot out of your workouts in in that very kind of like small um, time frame, and especially especially uh, within kind of like the contents of a of a movie, because everybody needs their slice of time like throughout the day, even in pre production. And, you know, and, and, the, and the book kind of like, you know, um, says like any athlete, whether it's pre-season or it's pre-production, um, that's when, you know, you're training hard to get ready. And then when you're in production, so actually filming, that's when you're in a maintenance phase and a recovery phase and work essentially becomes your workout. And then you need a cool down phase afterwards where, you, you know, you're trying to get back to normality and you're back into like your own stride. But um, yeah, and within 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 the book as well i touch upon like a little bit of recovery as well you know we all need like recovery whether that's physical or or mental um that that's that's very very kind of like imp important you know your your brain needs a rest as as, as much as your body does mm -hmm. um a little bit of like nutrition in there which again i'm not a big i'm not a big advocate of kind of like being really stern with nutrition i like to give parameters and let people have the flexibility and I think as humans, you know, it's nice to have that. It's nice to have those kind of like flexibility and, and, um, and choices. Yeah. And I have to tell you, the nutrition chapter was one of my favorites. Um, I didn't know what to expect, but what was beautiful about it, and again, I, I'm going to talk about this book without talking too much about this book because my audience will love reading it word for word, um, is that you talk about the whole idea that deficits, 
you know, actually restricting yourself can be actually detrimental. And you talked about, you know, somebody going catabolic, which I actually did to myself not too long ago. I decided to whittle things down. I was going to GoldenEye. I knew I was going to be going snorkeling. I knew it was going to be videotaped. I knew they were going to have a professional photographer. And yeah. I thought, oh, yeah. I'm going to shred. And yeah. what I wound up doing was eating away some of my muscle mass because of yeah. that. So you get into that, but you also talk about the fact that you've got a social aspect of nutrition and then you've got a, a well-being nutrition. And if you're going to put food in your mouth, just think about what is the food doing? What is yeah. it doing for you? And I thought it was such a great philosophical way to approach it. Yeah, it, it is. And, and it just works. And, and that's it. Food is it's psychology. And that's that's all it is. It's just a big it's just a big table of psychology. And um, you should, you know, and, and I have these like particular things that work for me work and, and work for, you know, for a lot of people of just kind of like, you know, nothing's off the table. So that's the first big psychological thing is that, you know, if you if you like we are as humans, you say you, you say, you know, to anybody, no, you can't have that. No, you shouldn't be drinking that. No, you shouldn't be doing that. All you think about is what you shouldn't be doing. That's all you want. It's all you want is another, another. But if you say, look, it's, it's all, everything is on the table. If you want something, go ahead and do it. And you end up making just better choices. And that's, that's, that's it. But if you want to make a choice that's maybe not the best choice, then you don't beat yourself up about it. And then it becomes more sustainable. So it's just nutrition. And I work with, um, like I said, like rules and parameters and and theme days. I like to like do, you know, just to mix it up a bit. It should be enjoyable. And food is such a pleasure, like for all of us. And, and, it, and it touches us on all different levels. But sometimes, you know, your body's going to tell you when it needs something for a, a physical, a, a physical repair, or it needs some energy. It'll tell you that. But then again, you know, we all have lives that we want to live, whether that be family life, social life, and, and you can't be the person at the table that's on a restrictive diet because that everyone else at the table then is looking at you like of, of, of you know in despair going and like feeling sorry for you and then you end up feeling sorry for you it's, it's just a, it's just a minefield it's just a minefield so again great just to be balanced and um and just make sure that nothing's off the table and um and just be kind to yourself yeah i love that you said that several times i think in the very end of the book you're like just remember to be kind to yourself by the way i'm going to start coining a term that you coined the, is it flexitarian? Is that what you yeah, said? Yeah, a bit of flexitarian, yeah. I love <laughs> that. I'm, I'm now officially a flexitarian. I'm proud of it. Yeah, that's great. That, that's great. Because we are, we are in, you know, we're in that month of kind of like where everything is like, um, there's a, it, it's dry January. It's um, veganuary. Um, yeah. <laughs> all these. January like, where you just drink gin. I mean. Yeah, <laughs> gin and, yes. <laughs> Oh, it's like it's like yeah so just be a flexitarian just be flexible kind of like with it within within your um you know within your nutritional i'm gonna do stuff. that by the way for yeah. some people the price of admission of this book is worth just finding out and we're not going to talk about the ingredients here um you actually give us not only the ingredients but the recipe for yours and daniel craig's post-workout shake which was amazing yeah, <laughs> yeah. i know um I don't think there's no martini in it either. Um, there's no alcohol. I don't know alcohol in it, no, no. Uh, yeah, but yeah, so that that's in there, which is which is great. I mean, it it was it was myself and um, you know in a very lucky position that um, you know he you know we, we happen to have someone that to prepare you know um, his our food, which is which is nice, which which just makes things again efficient. Sure. It's very, very, yeah, it's very, very efficient when you, um, when you kind of do that, because especially like on a film set, when you're doing Bond and stuff, you, you never know when you're going to eat, because this one scene can run, run and run and run and run. And by the time, you know, two, three, four hours, you know, and that's my job. My job is to kind of like read, almost like read the room and think, yeah, yeah you've got to be hungry now. Mm. So it's to, it's to go and say, look, let's like, let's kind of like get this together. And then I would like go on, I would kind of like go on set and then, and then, um, and then he would kind of like know that he could be able to sneak off for five minutes, have something to eat really quickly, and then kind of like carry on. And that would be, that's what happened on a daily basis. Yeah, so it, I, it begged a question as I was reading this, because I know that you talk about the chef that you had, um, the, the, the private chef, but um, 
are you constantly talking to that chef? Because I found it fascinating that you get the script, you get the stunt shots, and you're, um, I'm not going to call you motherly, but you're very caring of the actors that you work with, that you think about the stunts and what types of exercise activation they need to do. But you must also be thinking about the food. So are you constantly telling the chef like, hey, Daniel's got a big action scene tomorrow. We need this, this, and this. Yeah, it's all. Yeah, it's always. It's always. Uh, so again, it, it's just. It's adjusted on a on a on a daily basis. So I mean, I, I like to kind of like, especially, I work. I work out like what's um, um, athletic and what's aesthetic. So you know what can be showing more skin. You know, it's very. You know, on this one, you can see the shot on No Time to Die where he's um, he's having a shower. Yeah. You know, and he walks out the shower. It's a very, it's a very kind of like um, aesthetic shot. So you're constant. You, I know that date of when that's going to be. And I can, I can work back the nutrition and the exercise leading up to that to, you know, to be in the best, to be in the best shape possible. And um, then with the athletic shots, I can, I know when there's going to be, you know, with um, especially say, for instance, in the, um, in the, uh, in the boat, say like when, when, um, when when he's, the, all the fight stuff inside there mm. that's that's days and days and days of very kind of like um athletic stuff so you're 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 adjusting the 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 macro breakdown to give more energy so you're trying to get add more carbohydrate because <clears throat> we're not really in a repair mode then we're not really trying to like um repair muscle tissue we're trying to just give it m as much energy as possible so you're changing like the times the times that we got to be very constant every two hours to eat and 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 being in water as well adds a well like you know when you when you're a, when you're a kid or even an adult now after you've been swimming you're always completely starving yeah you know yeah. it's such a huge calorie burn so imagine being in that all day fighting and you know and you've kind of like got um felix hanging off your neck <laughs> it's you know you need yeah you need you need you need you probably need a few more calories that's great no i love no, that that's part. a problem for me and you no no never never i'd say so we'll no. watch from afar well, yeah. so the cadence of this book, I think it's important to talk a little bit about that with the audience because it's not these overwhelming chapters like here's your exercise chapter, here's your nutrition, here's about, you know, the, the stars of the movie. You, you really do have a cadence of you'll serve up certain philosophy, you'll serve up um, a, a point of view, then you'll talk about the actors, then you'll actually have a story or two, but you'll also pepper it with ideas around how people can make it their own. And it's a yeah. theme that is really woven that this may be a few stories and workouts about the stars that you work with, because it's your experience, but ultimately you translate that to somebody's individual workout. That had to be important. Yeah, it, and it's always got to be like that. I mean, that, that's that's the whole point is that to draw inspiration from it and to um, to use it as a toolbox to be able to kind of like pick up like different workouts and to suit like your mood or to suit like um, what, what, you know, what you'd like to kind of achieve. So you can take like, um, you know, um, some Daniel stuff there and do it one week. And then you can take like another kind of like actors, like maybe uh, John Krasinski or Chris Pratt or Chris Evans. You can take one of their like workouts, what they, how they worked out for, um, you know, for, for, for their kind of like movies and, and just, and, and make it more interesting. And then draw upon, and then draw upon, you know, the experiences that I've that I've written about, to um, you know, to 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 motivate, to motivate yourself, and also as well to make it interesting. And the biggest thing is is to make things sustainable, because look, we're all we're all now in that stage where, like we just talked about before with January, and I'm not one for resolutions. I'm more one for solutions. Mm. I think resolutions are very dated now. I think we should kind of like concentrate on well-being solutions because the, because that makes the psychology around that just makes it more sustainable because you can't have the same resolution year in year out year in year out it just it's just that's just crazy so I think kind of like coming up with especially around around fitness and well-being is coming up with a new year's kind of like solution yeah and you know I will again, confessional time, um, I've already started to plan out things that I'm going to do to adjust. Part of it was you motivating me to change things up, to keep it exciting, that whole idea of being like a child, you know, doing yeah. more things outdoors and fun. Um, so the first thing I did was I ordered an ab roller. Um, yeah. I did get some turmeric. I've already been doing ginger powder. So certain things yeah. that you say, 
But I want to I want to also talk to people because what this could sound like you and I waxing poetic about this is, you know, Daniel Craig's workout, Chris Evans workout, that it's this complicated thing. You kept it so simple, the whole five two methodology yeah. that had to right. be a, a focus for you to to do that. Yeah, and that and that's that's it. It, it, it. And also as well, I think kind of like the the what I kind of like think now with the way that that we are is that teaching um, a mythology that you can keep with you all the time makes it so much easier because we travel and we go places and we go to family and we go on holidays and, we, and you know if you travel for for business or you. So if you if you if you know a particular mythology, you can apply that wherever you are, whether you're in a hotel room, whether you're in whether you've got a big fancy gym or, or whether you've just got a few bits of equipment, you know, indoors, outdoors kind of. So having a mythology just up here that you can take with you is it's a lot easier than hard and fast. You need this machine or these particular weights or because then it becomes, like I said before, then it's not sustainable because you miss a workout, you beat yourself up and you don't go back to it. So teach yourself a little and be kind to yourself and teach yourself a mythology. And then, um, and then you've got it with you all the time. Yeah. And it's, it speaks to something I hear from people all the time, uh, especially on my Instagram, for example, I get DMs all the time from people saying, you know what, I'd love to do, you know, this whole fitness challenges, this idea of, you know, being this well-being aspect. Unfortunately, I have this excuse, that excuse, and they go down the line. And there's actually a wonderful section of the book that I just smiled the whole way through because it goes through how to neutralize some of those excuses and actually take the excuses and use them as a strength. You know, find a way to around it and create a plan. Yeah. And and like like anything, you you need to you need to find what your what your triggers are and what your catalysts are for your own kind of um, motivation because everybody is kind of like so different you know getting out of bed in the morning I mean people love to use that five four three two one method out yeah. and, and <laughs> it's kind of like I'm like oh five four three two one mm, five four three yeah I, that doesn't work for me but for a lot of people it kind of does but yeah it, trying to use well you would neutralize or reverse psychology is um, it, it's it's important and I mean I, I find I, I find that um, when I'm being strict and sometimes I have to be super strict to myself a little bit more than normal so I, I uh, I'm a little bit um, but it, it becomes more of a natural thing so like when the, when the nice summer months come what we're all naturally kind of like we're not craving the um, you know the the, um, the heavy kind of like stodgy kind of like food anymore right. we are kind of like starting to gravitate into you know different different kind of like me, me i'm i'm more like now plant-based i really i really like love going down the, the plant-based um route it just it just kind of like it suits me i'd probably say i'm maybe you know 80 percent maybe like wow. you can't say 80 percent uh -huh. vegan because that doesn't because that doesn't make sense but 80 percent plant-based um and, and 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 i feel like um i feel a lot better for it um but it doesn't really suit other people some people just love you know they're they're meat eaters and, and that's it they feel better on meat a lot of people kind of a lot of people kind of do but that's why with within the nutrition i quite try and keep those theme days rather than hard and fast hard and fast kind of um, meal plans so you know i have um i have like vegan monday and kind of like um and um white meat tuesday pescatarian wednesday you know and then and then like and then it'd be red meat, everyone's favorite red meat Friday. Yeah, um, yeah. And then, and then Saturday is kind of like, you know, Saturday and Sunday is kind of like flexitarian, do what you like. Back to it on Monday. Yeah. And that really, that really works because it's easy to stick within those parameters wherever you are, you know, nowadays in, in, in most kind of like grocery stores or, or when you go out, people, you know, it's easy to make those decisions in restaurants now. Yeah, that's, that was such a refreshing note to this book because, I mean, you know, I'm just going to read this real quick. Leia Sadu, Daniel Craig, uh, Chris Evans, John Boyega, but you've got Jake Gyllenhaal, which amazing stories, Adam Driver. Um, there are so many great things in here, but when you think about like Chris Evans, Captain America, when he comes out of the pod, so many of us could get intimidated. And when you see something that's very simplified, though I have to say, for those watching, I, my audience is arguably about 85% male. It just is. It's James Bond, right? Um, but I will say that 
one thing that you pronounce in here is number one, do the workout if you can with somebody else. So if somebody has a spouse, you could introduce them to this. The other thing is you do focus on um, like Bryce Howard and the female stars that you worked with in, you know, not just working with aesthetics, but grace and beauty. So you yeah. have, you have the genders well represented. Yeah. And that's always, that's always really, you know, as a, as a trainer, you've got to be so kind of like adaptable and be able to, um, because especially like with the, you know, the bond girl fraternity, which I've, you know, I worked with like quite, quite a few, um, with Leia and, um, you know, and Ivy Green and, you know, and I mean, going right back to kind of like, um, um, Halle Berry, Rosamund Pike, you know, a lot of Gemma Arterton. So a lot of, a lot of the Bond girls that I'd like worked with, you've got to kind of like create, um, they have to be capable and have like performance, but on the other side, they've got to have like grace and elegance. So I have to find that blend of maybe like not, not building too much muscle tissue, making sure they've got good posture and keeping that femininity about them, but as well as being able to kind of like do a lot of the performance as well, to try and keep up with some, in some cases, maybe try and keep up with, keep up with Daniel, you know, and, and, um, and match him. And he's all about the brawn and the physicality. So, you know, it's, it's really hard to finesse that and make sure that, um, you know, that they're very, that they're very still maintaining that, that real, um, that real elegance and, and presence. So the workouts are, 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 um, are quite kind of like a, a, a very different, but um, again, they're still quite grueling so that they still get a lot of performance out of it. Yeah. And I love the fact that you can have conversations with them in a very familiar manner, depending on maybe the night they had, you, you have a great Chris Pratt story there where maybe, you know, the night before wasn't so great and you adjust, you know, you say something is better than nothing, which is so important. Yeah. Something is better than nothing. And then, and then, What's really difficult is is with the ones that are like like the the Chris's and um, the Tom Hiddlestons and 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 like that, they're um they're very much, you know, I'm, I'm paid to motivate, and and be on set to, but you know everyone finds it kind of like a little bit weird when they when they come out and say, okay, so what what are we doing? I'm like nothing, nothing, I, because I've seen your day. I've just seen what you've done. There's no point in going. There's no point in going to the gym and risking injury and risking illness. Part of this workout and part of your regime is go home, get a great, do your recovery, get a great night's sleep. And then tomorrow let's kind of like reassess and then we'll get more out of our kind of like prescribed workouts. But that's a hard thing because what, <laughs> it's like, it's almost like I'm perceived as being, uh, being lazy. It's like, what, you just told them to do nothing. I'm like, yeah, are you are your, and you're paid to tell them to do nothing. I'm like, yeah, but would you dare tell them to say to, to say that you're not doing anything tonight? And they're like, no, 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 no. I would never dare tell them tell them not to work mm -hmm. out. I'm like, yeah, but that's part of my job. And it's and it's, and it's really um, yeah, it's really interesting. But again, it's it's such an important aspect of it is because you know they're 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 movie stars and and if you don't know them um, in the way that I kind of like know them, you, you, you know they, it could be intimidating. So to tell somebody not to do something um, is 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 quite tough, but I've got I've I hopefully you know there's a certain amount of respect that they've got for me to say look, let's just kind of, I can see it in your I can see it in your um, demeanor and the and the amount of input and that you've done today is to just have a rest. This is important. You know, sp speaking of speaking to them, I know many of these many many of these individuals become your friends. I mean, you spend years, sometimes decades with some of them. Um, at some point, I was getting the sense, and you don't outright say this, but I could read between the lines, that clearly you had to speak to all of these people to say, hey, I'm writing a book. I'm going to be talking about these things. But more importantly, I felt like maybe some of them actually motivated you to put it in a book form. Um, yeah, I think, I think so. I think kind of like, um, I, I think so. But I, I did you know, that what the nice thing was about it is, to be honest, which I found, is that they were more honoured to be in it than I was asking them. You know, if, if I said, oh, no, you're not going to be in it. They're like, what? What? I didn't make the cut. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> you 
<laughs> so it's, it was a little bit it was a little bit the reverse of that they were all really kind of like happy yeah i'll definitely i'm definitely down for it so i was like so flattered that everybody would just like so kind of and that's that's the thing you know you, you you invest so much time into people that to get a little bit back from them is is just kind of it's um yeah it's um it's it, it, it was pretty amazing. And the comments that I got were not the ones that I expected because I, I live, you know, I, I live in, I live in that world and it's just, a, it's, it is just a job to me. Um, and I, I'm very used to it and, and it has to be like that. I can't, I can't be, there can't be no intimidation because I'm, I'm teaching and I need to get things out of people. And um, so, yeah, the comments that I got back were just so, you know, so amazing you know you you you, you know you read daniel's like forward and, and oh, yeah. for me to receive that i was expecting you know you expect like a couple of lines of of um you know of, of what you think is like yeah simon did a great job thank you but for someone to say you know uh, portraying bond for 15 years i couldn't have done it like without simon is just um that's that's pretty powerful you know you, yeah. you kind of like yeah. you realize that you you know and, you, and then you you reflect on that and you go yeah yeah you're gonna I was there every day, every minute, you know, kind of like making sure that everything was, you know, okay. Yeah. And yeah. That, that's kind of like great. And you need, I think you need, you need, and you see, you see now with a lot of, well, especially with a lot of kind of like movie stars, they have their, I think the word used to be um, entourage, <laughs> but I don't think entourage is the right word anymore. I think the, you know, essential key people to keep that person focused on the job that they're doing and take a little bit of the stresses of the things that they shouldn't be stressing about just focus on their work and you're just literally just lightening the load a little bit and and that's kind of like that was that's my job is to lighten the load you don't have to think about nutrition i've got your recovery kind of like sorted you can't you um you know this is this is like what we're this is what we're going to do this week and um and everything everything's everything's good so you're just making things more comfortable for somebody I think a better yeah. word would be team, because yeah. I, I find that entourage or posse, you know, they're kind of hanger ons that really have no purpose or service. You know, Daniel's team, of which you're a part of, and many of these actors, um, really, your partners and their progress in what they do. And it's uh, his forward, which, by the way, was pages long, not a few lines, as you yeah. know, really is a microcosm of your book, because it talks about the physical the emotional journey and the fact that everybody worked together. This yeah. wasn't an individual. It. You can't do, you can't get through these jobs without being a team. And, and that's it. And, and that's what I draw upon. I mean, I'm so blessed with the, the people that I kind of like work with, whether that's even from down to having a, a great kind of like physical therapist that I work with, having a great kind of like chef. And we, we come together as a team and we, we move as one as a vehicle and um, to get that person like through you know, a really physical shoot of, you know, and, and like, you know, you've, you've spoken, you've probably, you, you know, you've spoken to them extensively and um, it is, it, it's brutal. It's a brutal shoot, but the end product is, is the reward. And that's the thing. And you get these amazing end products and you can see the amount of work that's gone into it. It's, um, it's, it's the long hours. It's very physical. Um, it's not, it's not that glamorous. It's a lot of car parks at four o'clock in the morning and a lot of, a lot of, yeah, it's not as what, what people would essentially think it is. But at the end of the day, when you get to that end product, you can reflect on it and go, wow, it actually was, it was fun. And um, there are, you know, great fun elements, but there's not, you know, when you're dragging yourself out of bed at like two o'clock in the morning to get to a, to get to a set. And then you know, it, it, it doesn't feel like fun at the time, but it, it is it, it's it, and you know their movies are kind of like testament to everyone's amazing hard work yeah well i will tell you this um and it's it's a bit of a general thank you to you because for many years maybe even decades um certainly the bond community has been craving a book like this and there has been speculative articles and as you know other authors you know that speculate yeah. but never the gentleman who actually did the job and this to me is such a crescendo it's such a pinnacle and the epitome of what we've all been asking for it's incredibly exciting so thank you thank you thanks david yeah this has been amazing so here's what we're going to do we're going to put all the links down below by the way for those um 
for those of you that love to collect, there's there's two covers out there. There's a US cover, of course, and there's a European based cover. So have at it, if you will. But Simon, thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll be following you eagerly. We're all huge fans of what you do. So thank you. Brilliant. Perfect. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Bye bye. Thanks, David. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.